Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the show. This is the PTBO Housing Show. This week, we've got Henry Clark on for an interview. Henry has been involved in local politics for a very long time. He's in his 24th year as a municipal councillor. He's running for the job of mayor, and we talk about all types of things from what got him interested in this line of work, what motivates him, what's his why, what he envisions for Peterborough's future, what his top priorities are if he gets the job, his thoughts on housing, his thoughts on the downtown, um, affordable housing, job creation, all types of good stuff. So saddle in. I think that you are really going to enjoy this one. And for anybody who's interested, Henry is one of two current mayoral candidates. The other one is Stephen Wright, who we interviewed a couple of weeks ago, if you're new to the show. Also, if you're new to the show, this is a weekly show slash podcast. Every other week is a long format interview. And the following week is a statistical deep dive on what happened in the last couple of weeks in the real estate markets locally, provincially, And across our country, we're always talking about statistics, uh, macroeconomics. We're always diving into the politics that is making things move. And if you're interested in just getting more informed uh, in order to make better decisions in your housing situation, then please consider subscribing, give us a like, and of course, share the show to anybody that you think might find it useful. So enough of that. Let's get on to the interview and we'll see everybody next week. Okay. Hello, everybody. And hello, Henry. Hello. What a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day. Um, So we're going to talk to Henry here. We're going to do a bit of a personal introduction. We're going to talk about uh, what's brought him to seeking the mayoral position, some of the key topics he sees at stake. And then of course, we're going to talk about housing. So Henry, first things first, you've been on city council for 24 Yeah, I'm in my years? 25th year, seven terms. Wow. So I've got all kinds of questions that come to mind when uh, I I look at your resume there. Um, What got you interested in politics originally? What what was your launch point? Well, this may sound strange, but politics don't interest me. Public service does. I absolutely love working with and for people. Mm -hmm. When you get the phone call from the little old lady that doesn't know who to call or what to do, and she's got a particular problem, Mm -hmm. being able to help them out, it really is, it's very satisfying. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like you accomplished something in a day and made somebody's life better. Interesting. That's a, that's a great answer because, uh, politics is a different game than (laughs) public service. They're not necessarily synonymous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, And I say, I've dedicated myself to that. I realize obviously I'm a politician i mm-hmm. work with that and i'm fine with that but mm-hmm. i say it, it's being involved in people's lives and making a difference that really motivates me to be a city councillor. yeah no that's that's uh interesting so when you started um your motivation was to help people what were some of the key issues back when you originally got involved in city council that drove you to uh you know get get so involved they're probably not a whole lot different than, than uh, today. But uh, council at that time was struggling. Mm-hmm. They, they uh, really needed some new energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was the issue over the parkway was a big one, mm-hmm. taxes another. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are probably the two biggest ones back then. What was Peterborough going to be like and where was it going? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I had just spent uh, 27 years in the Army Reserve while working at Quaker. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a new horizon. Mm -hmm. I had risen to the command of my regiment. Mm -hmm. And there was locally no further place I could go. Mm -hmm. And people said to me, you should get involved with council. They could really use your energy. Mm. So I watched for a little bit, talked to a couple former mayors and some friends, and decided to go for it. Mm-hmm. 
And that was at the time where you live in, cause you've been, have you been in the, the Monaghan, uh, ward your entire tenure? Yes. Yes. And so were you living in that area at the time or? Yes, it was. Okay. Interesting. Um, that's an area that we, I mean, as with all the Peterborough would have seen quite a bit of change. Um, but, but, uh, so you, you got started in, in South Monaghan, the parkway was a hot button issue. Um, and then you got involved, you decided to stick it out ever since. How do you think the vision for the city has changed over the years? We've got a massive population boom happening. Um, in, in your opinion, how have you watched the vision evolve and how, how is it aligning your vision now, your vision forward? Yeah, the city's changed a lot, mm -hmm. especially if I go right back to when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. When I was younger and, and uh, growing up, it was an industrial town. Mm -hmm. I mean, GE was 7,000 employees, Quaker was 1,000, West Fox was 1,000, mm -hmm. Edward Marine and so forth. So you had that kind of um, ability to go to school, get your grade 12, go get a job, yeah. raise a family. It's not that way now. Yeah. Uh, many people are struggling to find a job to begin with, or they're working two or three. Mm. Uh, the lucky ones do have a good job. Uh, say I had my entire career with Quaker, for mm -hmm. which I'm eternally grateful. Mm -hmm. But the city is now more focused on commercial, mm -hmm. on uh, work from home. Mm -hmm. There's still some very good industry and there's an amazing array of small industry in, mm -hmm. in our industrial park. Uh, but there's a lot of service. I mean, the single biggest ones are our education field mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between Trent to Sanford and all our uh, elementary schools. Mm -hmm. uh, medical. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the hospital employs uh, a tremendous number of people. Mm -hmm. And that uh, has a, a huge impact on the city. So we've changed very much in terms of who we are and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the other way we've changed is we've become um, more multicultural. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can remember the, the first time that uh, a new restaurant opened in town that was something different. I went, oh. Hey, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You could really see it when Trent opened mm -hmm. because now you had hundreds of students coming in, the professors from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that brought a new perspective to the city. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. Mm -hmm. It still is. They're, mm -hmm. they're a tremendous positive thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you never used to be able to go down and get anything other than uh, ordinary food or Chinese. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. those days. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I that was just when I was young. There, were, there was still was not the variety that yeah. there is and, now. And yeah. now, I, I mean, we have all kinds yeah. of, of things. We we have uh, the ability to take part in so many things that just weren't there before, mm -hmm. and that also creates um, a different atmosphere in the city. Mm -hmm. It makes it more welcoming to people from other lands or other cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good thing. It mm -hmm. has strengthened Peterborough. It has broadened our perspectives. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to take some of the good things from these folks and share our good things with them. Mm -hmm. Now, on the note of obviously with much of our uh, diversification, it's uh, you know via immigration, that's part of the pressure in terms of the population uh, boom. And then obviously the construction uh we, we, we need to build a lot of homes and basically we're in a game of musical chairs right now with our housing situation where uh, th there's just more people than homes in just about every city in Ontario and we're, we're, we're no different. Yeah. Um, w w you know, what are your views on, I mean, in my mind, one of our biggest challenges going forward is, is how we're going to view growth uh, and how growth oriented Peterborough will continue to be and, um, you know, we're, we'll be jumping into the housing talk, uh, but what is your vision for Peterborough in terms of growth? How do we meet this continuing demand for new residents? You know, this continued demand for housing. Yeah. We have a supply, thanks to the forward thinking of previous councils. Mm -hmm. We have about a 30-year supply 
of uh, land that is within the city limits that can handle housing. Mm -hmm. What we don't have is employment land. Mm -hmm. To all intents and purposes, we're out. Mm -hmm. We have, I think it's 25 acres and it's in three penny packet pieces. Mm -hmm. If a major employer wanted to come here right now and set up in Peterborough, whether that was uh, an assembly building or, or um, a big insurance company or whatever, we have no place to put it. Mm -hmm. Even if we, we can find the houses, we can get the houses built for the workers, but no place for that business to come. And what we hear constantly from people is, we just want a job. We want to be able to work and raise our families. Mm -hmm. And frankly, the city needs the tax revenue from those things to pay for the wants and desires of the community. Mm -hmm. So would you say that's one of our most pressing issues is the, the lack of employment lands, industrial lands? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of anything that is holding the city back more. Mm -hmm. Now, you will also have good discussion over how do you do growth? Mm -hmm. In which some, sense do you mean, Henry? How do you do growth in which facet? Yeah, in anything, whether mm -hmm. that is residential or employment plans, mm -hmm. uh, anything that expands the city. Because you've got people who are talking very much about, well, we don't want sprawl. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants sprawl. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, when, you know, you had... Um, a house on a huge lot. Mm -hmm. People spent all weekend cutting the grass. Mm -hmm. People don't want that now. Mm -hmm. They want a house with the bells and whistles. They may even not want a house. They may want a nice condo mm -hmm. or a townhouse or an apartment. And we don't have an adequate supply of any of those things. Mm -hmm. But by building it sensibly, by making really good intense use of the land, mm -hmm. Not only can you supply the accommodation for people and the employment, but it gives you the ability to keep the cost of operating the city down. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, if we want to send water to a bunch of houses, mm -hmm. now you're out in a rural area, but mm -hmm. let's just say we built the city like this. Mm -hmm. We would have to run miles of pipe mm -hmm. to get you water. Mm -hmm. But if... 50 feet down the road was another house and another 50 feet and another 50 feet. Totally. It's the same piping going mm -hmm. by. Mm -hmm. It's the same postman going by. You don't need uh, additional uh, police because they can get there in a hurry. It's the same number of mailmen, the garbage collectors. Mm -hmm. All those things that cost a huge amount of money mm -hmm. and put pressure on your taxes can be kept reasonable. Climate change. Mm -hmm. We want trees we want sensible use you don't want to be all over the place so that everything has to be a car mm -hmm. there's a lot of talk about biking these days mm -hmm. and it's great it, where it reduces the wear and tear on your roads mm -hmm. it uh, gets people far more healthy mm -hmm. so those things are important to your community as well yeah climate change is one of your um probably one of your pillars i would say right yes yeah it's something i'm very interested in. i got a four-year-old granddaughter mm -hmm. And I want her to have just as wonderful a time growing up and a future as mm -hmm. I've had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's one. It's interesting because I've never, I've never felt satisfied enough on any of the arguments for or against climate change to ever enter the discussion. It's something that I've always just stayed away from because I there's just so much research on like there's so 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 it's just opinionated pieces on both sides. Uh, let, let me tell you a story. Yeah, my grandmother. Now, the lady has been gone for almost 50 years, mm -hmm. but she was a farm girl. Mm -hmm. She grew up uh, in a cabin, mm -hmm. lived out in the prairies during the, the Dust Bowl, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But she was what I would call mm -hmm. a weather witch. She could foretell the weather by how the cat was washing its ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the farmer's which the Alvinax. Which yeah, way yeah. the smoke was blowing. <laughs> how All big the tune bugs of, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was uncanny correct. But I can remember in the 1960s, mm -hmm. her looking at us and saying, the weather's changing. Mm -hmm. She says, it's all those things are shooting up in the sky. Well, I don't think it was really that, but mm -hmm. 
she was she was saying the weather is changing mm -hmm. and then she would start talking about how much snow there was when she was a girl mm -hmm. versus now and so forth mm -hmm. she was right mm -hmm. the weather is changing mm -hmm. call it climate change whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. the world's changing mm -hmm. and that implies some challenges and threats to our way of living mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on climate change, but because you're so passionate about it, I, I don't mind, uh, you know, let's drill into it a little bit. What do you think are the main pieces? You mentioned more bike, uh, I would assume more emphasis on bike lanes, et cetera. What, what, you know, in terms of an action plan, um, what would you see as an action plan for climate change? And then how does that affect, like, is it a budget neutral item? Does it, a, is it a cost that's hard to recoup? How do you view that? It depends, I guess, on how you look at it. Um, from what I understand, and I'm reading an interesting book on mm -hmm. electrify everything, mm -hmm. um, upfront there's costs, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's uh, additional uh, green energy, mm -hmm. whether that is more transmission lines, mm -hmm. whatever. There, there are definitely costs to get green energy to a house or, or a business mm -hmm. or Municipally, um burden cost or how do you or, or or utility you know uh hydro one who who saddles the investment on any type of you know infrastructure yeah. changes specifically yeah, yeah. There, there, there's there's no question about that so you've got to look at what's it costing and what is it going to give us as a benefit mm -hmm. and if we can uh, make good use of the land mm -hmm. put those services in for instance, right now, Peterborough generates roughly 50% of its requirement as green energy. Mm -hmm. The rest comes from uh, nuclear or it comes from, um, from gas, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And that long term is going to, in my opinion, really harm the environment. Mm -hmm. But if we can get people uh, living closer together, mm -hmm. using things that are environmentally friendly, mm -hmm. And those are all things that the city has some control over. Mm -hmm. We do control approvals on subdivisions. Mm -hmm. We do uh, have the approvals over what roads are put in. Mm -hmm. We can control how much money we put into transit or walking or other forms of being able to get around that aren't dependent upon a gas engine. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe the province has said they want all cars by 2050 to be electric. <laughs> yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it sounds pretty good to me. I, th I think you need a whole lot better batteries than they've got right now. Yeah, I, I, I've i heard a simple, I haven't verified it myself, but I heard it from a fairly good uh, news feed that for Canada to achieve its goal, they would need to have a monopoly over the world's lithium resources for several years running where nobody else could have any because it's it's just not... Uh, uh, I, yeah, I hadn't yeah. heard that one. Yeah. Um, do I think it's going to happen overnight? No. Mm -hmm. But incrementally, if we keep working away at it, things are going to change and they are going to improve. Mm -hmm. They have to. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, so so it brings up an interesting topic when we talk about the infrastructure, no doubt, uh, the benefits of densification, intensification and, and densifying, mm -hmm. um, you know, and obviously it's all in line with the provincial mandates and, and the sort of the headwinds of, of, of the era is that we're going to be living closer together, they're going to be tightening on sprawl. Um, you know, when when it when it comes down to uh, infill, and building, you know, obviously it seems like you have a view for subdivisions will have in, involve more, probably mid-rise, right? If I'm, you know, more townhouse, obviously more mixed use, not so much just detached, a little mixed planning. But when it comes to, obviously, the, some of the real great bang for the buck, not just financially, but in terms of um, win-wins all the way around and, and encompassing climate change and, and efficiencies uh, is is downtown core developments and continuing a lot of the stuff that we've seen for example with the y lofts and whatnot do you do you envision a downtown core that gets built up more how do you you know how do you view yeah, the downtown? i, I want to see a lot more people downtown mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um several thousand more would suit me mm -hmm. now i don't just mean in the area where the stores are but but the the general center part of the city mm -hmm. that has huge benefits 
uh, a city that lets its downtown or its center rust out ends up mm -hmm. in trouble in a big hurry. Mm -hmm. But if you have people that are um, living there, mm -hmm. and even better if they're working there, mm -hmm. that creates eyes on the street. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, makes people feel safer mm -hmm. because now there's always somebody around. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I was in New York City. And I mean, I'd heard about, ooh. Mm -hmm. I was out walking at 1130 at night and there were people everywhere. Yeah. And you just, you didn't feel nervous. Mm -hmm. I, I hear from people that don't want to go downtown anymore mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of it's dirty or there's they're being accosted mm -hmm. or it's just empty. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know there's empty stores and so forth. Mm -hmm. But if you have people there, they become the customers of the restaurants, the theaters, mm -hmm. uh, the clothing stores, mm -hmm. the, the grocery stores. Totally. We are so fortunate in Peterborough. We have two downtown grocery stores. Yeah. There are many places that don't. And we've got the wild that mm -hmm. are going. We've got the uh, new one where the old shoppers uh, drug mart mm -hmm. was on George Street. Mm -hmm. That is going to be 40 or 50 more uh, apartments. Mm -hmm. Then there's the, the ones that are going up over in East City where the West Clocks was. Mm -hmm. It's not that far to walk across the bridge. Yeah. I grew up, I went to King George School. Yeah. So you like these types of developments, the mid rise, like you're okay seeing mid rise, even what we, you know, we'd consider high rise here in yeah. the inner city core. You'd like to see more of it, you yes. think? Yeah. Yes. Because that gives people options for housing. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives them an option for what they can afford. And as I say, eyes on the street, people in the downtown, uh, a homegrown market, so to speak. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. It always seems there's so many hurdles. It seems the biggest one in the downtown uh, is, it, well, there's heritage and, and there's parking <laughs> are, are, are two major issues that continue, sure. seem to continually come up. But if you intensify in the right way mm -hmm. and you have people living and working, your need for parking can be managed. Why should you have to require an apartment building to have 1.25 parking spots mm -hmm. when you may have people living there that don't even have a car? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I mean, the, there's some experimenting there, and the, mm -hmm. there's tables that'll tell you what you need to do, but mm -hmm. there's still ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get those people there. And it can have a huge positive impact on the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the downtown, because it's a good one to to it's it's there's a lot of there's a big topic with the downtown. Um, what are your thoughts on the harm reduction units and whatnot in their locations within the downtown and and having those sort of hubs um, for the safe injection sites uh, and whatnot centrally located versus somewhere on the peripheral? Do you have any opinions on any of that stuff? Well, those are services that we need, mm -hmm. and they have to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so because of the, the way the, the downtown, and I'm not talking the commercial core, I'm talking about the downtown, the, the old part of the city, mm -hmm. has the ability to absorb more people. It's got the big old houses that have been uh, brought, broken down into apartments and mm -hmm. so forth. That kind of place makes sense because most of the people that really need those services whether it's social services whether it's medical services they don't have cars mm -hmm. um, they can ride the transit for sure if they can afford it mm -hmm. and on some of those rates I don't think you really can afford it hmm. e even at what we're trying to do oh, really so you've got to put those things where the people are mm -hmm. then of course you also have to look at then how do you keep them um occupied and being being cured themselves rather than being uh, a disease on totally the yeah post uh, yeah beyond beyond the safe injection site yeah what's the what's the process right sure yeah yeah um okay so i guess before i veer too far any more of the particular housing topics what do you see other than because we hit on climate change talked about the growth um your your uh, slogan is, is, uh, principled and proven. Proven. Yeah. Um, wh what else do you see if you're looking at Peter Rowe holistically when you, when you break down, okay, if I get this 
job if you got the job as mayor you know the first three months i'm sure will go by very fast how do you prioritize your time what issues do you attack first other than the ones we talked about is there any glaring items that you see as this needs dealt with right away yeah uh there's there's several Mm -hmm. and they were in my platform Mm -hmm. the one i simply care about is thinking big Mm -hmm. We don't think ahead enough. Mm-hmm. Last night at council, I asked the question, so what are we doing about replacing the trees that have been destroyed? Mm-hmm. And the, the question shocked a lot of people because we're still trying to clean up. Mm-hmm. But you've got to start thinking past the post. It's like a, a long-distance runner. Mm-hmm. They're not trained to run to this, mm-hmm. the end tape. They're trained to run through it. Mm-hmm. And we have to do those kind of things mm. to um, to move ahead with that. Mm. I think a huge priority is rebuilding the relationships with our neighbors. Mm-hmm. Cavan? Uh, Cavan, yeah. the, the county, mm-hmm. um, and the other townships that are around. Mm-hmm. Because we're not here in isolation, and neither are they. Mm-hmm. We either cooperate for the betterment of us all, mm-hmm. Or we all suffer. Mm -hmm. And for years now, we've all suffered by Mm -hmm. the inability to be ready for that 407 when it was coming. Mm -hmm. I just about wept over, we've had three deals that were that close Mm -hmm. to being settled with Cavan. One time it was uh, Cavan that backed out, and twice it was the city. Mm -hmm. On minor issues that really should have been just, yeah, okay, I don't like it, but let's just move on with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that that really bothered me that we didn't make those changes. Mm-hmm. That, that, that gives us the ability to work together, bring the jobs, uh, create the economy that people want so mm-hmm. that they can have the goods and services. So specifically on that note, what do you see as the way forward? I mean, it's, it's clear from the outsider's view that an agreement needs to be reached, you know, and, and, and like you said, you, you know, it's, it's your, it would be your intent to, to, to facilitate that, um, you know, in, in terms of a, a Peterborough voter, what do they need to bear in mind in terms of what are the key issues at stake when it comes to striking a deal like that? What do they stand to gain? What do they stand to lose? More specifically, what does anyone stand to lose? Why haven't we reached an agreement yet? You know? Well, you mentioned early in this discussion about politics. Mm -hmm. Politics has gotten in the way. Mm -hmm. The belief that if if your side is to win, the other side must lose. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. I have spent years building up um, working relationships Mm -hmm. with the the county Mm -hmm. and Cabin in particular. I count to both the current warden and the mayor of Cavan as friends. Mm -hmm. We're able to sit down and talk quite forcefully about what we want. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But we also keep that shared vision Mm -hmm. of moving our whole region ahead out there in front of us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's absolutely vital for Peterborough City Council to develop. We don't have a shared vision of anything. Mm -hmm. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're trying to do. Each individual Mm councillor has, but there's no overall Yeah, the cohesion, Peterborough County, one unit. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's possible to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not even that hard, Mm -hmm. but you have to know about how to go about it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something I was very good in the Army in doing, was bringing a team together that they may be from different regiments, different backgrounds, whatever, Mm -hmm. but show them how to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think from just talking to a number of my colleagues, there's a genuine desire to get back to that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's some of the incumbents now um, and some of the new people coming in. I've sat down and talked to many of them. And they're saying, yeah, that's what we want. To get some cohesiveness of the vision and of the groups and of the municipal groups. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, if you don't know where you're trying to go, how Mm -hmm. do you ever get there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you sit down and say, okay, uh, we want a community that is, um, climate friendly. Mm -hmm. 
We want one where we talk to our neighbors and cooperate, mm -hmm. and it's just not automatically, no, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Where we really sit down and say, what is it that we want to accomplish in terms of uh, infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the new facilities that people want? I mean, there's some that have huge price tags out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so we have to say, okay, we can do this, but we can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we could do this and this. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, parks. Mm -hmm. We have those jewels, um, Jatsons Park, Nichols Oval. Mm -hmm. Where's the next one? Yeah. Where is the next? Those came to us thanks to Charlotte Nichols. Mm -hmm. But where is the next big park? Mm -hmm. um, we need to be thinking about that. About the roadways, where mm -hmm. do they go? How are we going to encourage more people to do alternate forms of transportation? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know right now that the people are unhappy with our transit system. So we either have to show them that it works mm -hmm. or fix it so that it works. Mm -hmm. But regardless, we've got to get on with dealing with that. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to have the jobs for people. I'm tired of watching generations move away from this city. Mm -hmm. There was uh, 30 of us in my grade 8 class at King George. There was about 150 when I graduated from Thomas A. Stewart. Mm -hmm. Virtually none of them are still here. Mm -hmm. They had to go elsewhere for employment. Mm -hmm. My friends, their children, most of them are gone elsewhere. Do you think we can ever attract um, high level service type workers rather than just aiming for that industrial, really land intensive? Um, obviously, like, you know, we look at the innovation cluster and shared workspaces and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of my own friends that I know that have left the city. Uh, they're all for, it's not all knowledge work based out of Toronto, yeah. which, um, I don't think it's necessarily, uh, the thing that those companies have to exist there because it's very expensive mm -hmm. to have office space there still. And we're seeing a lot of people move here that are mobile workers based in Toronto, but they, they yeah. work, they live here now cause they're all mobile. Mm -hmm. Um, any vision for more, uh, sort of commerce, e-commerce and, and, it, and, you know, clusters like that. Yeah, and if you notice, I didn't say industrial lands. I said employment lands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm open to anything mm -hmm. that, that is appropriate to the area. Mm -hmm. And that could be a head office. Mm -hmm. I say it could be an insurance building. It could be a distribution center. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, a food processing plant. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But we've got people here who are multilingual, mm -hmm. highly skilled, mm -hmm and extremely motivated to work. Mm -hmm. We've got a fantastic workforce. I know I've worked with hundreds of them at Quaker mm -hmm. and I watched when I first started there, they were belts and pulleys. And when I left, it was all electronic mm -hmm. and the people had, had learned about that. So mm -hmm. those are the kind of things that we have to show the, the world because it's not just Ontario anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, we show the world what we can do, mm -hmm. and we, we need to showcase that far more than we do. Partly, again, I come back to the need for the shared vision. Mm -hmm. We can't be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. It's just not mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. and I don't think we want to be. Nope. <laughs> but if we decide we're going to be the absolute world class in um, water purification, mm -hmm. For instance, uh, what has been going on with Noble? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a homegrown thing. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Noble went to Thomas A. Stewart. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of opportunities that are out there. And that can be built upon. And I know that the innovation cluster and the cube and so forth are all looking at doing just that. Mm -hmm. And we've got that incredible um, education facility at mm -hmm. Trent and Sir mm -hmm. Sanford mm -hmm. that have all the right people to keep working and driving that forward. Mm -hmm. So when you think of, um, so when I think thinking big, I guess it will have to cover what your next, uh, piece there. Cause we talked about climate change, talked about, you, you mentioned thinking big. Um, and, and I believe we're missing 
Uh, oh, getting and, along with our neighbors. Get along with our neighbors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dealing with uh, poverty. That's yeah. another thing that yeah. really has to be looked at. Um, we have uh, a significant element mm -hmm. in our community that is living pretty miserable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have to find ways to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our waiting list for affordable housing is unfortunately growing despite mm -hmm. our best efforts. In your assessment, how many units would you say we need for affordable housing and uh, on along what timeline? Mm -hmm. We are short about 13 to 1400 units mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. Now the wait list is about 1600 to 1650. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that not all of those people are looking for homes. Some may be living in uh, complex A that want to move to complex B. Mm -hmm. They may be in a three bedroom, but the kids have gone off to school. So now they only need a one bedroom. So mm -hmm. you have the internal transfers as well, mm -hmm. which show up on that list, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's still yeah, so not net new units. They don't need, it's not necessarily that you need yeah. new units. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now we're working hard on that. We've looked at restructuring Peterborough housing corporation to be able to, um, finance some rebuilds. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at the the details of the legal issues on that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting if we can make it work. And it also opens up some huge pools of funding from um, the senior levels of government. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. to be honest, the city does not have the financial wherewithal mm -hmm. to um, take care of housing and social assistance mm -hmm. and so forth for all the people that need it. For sure. We just do not have that kind of economic ability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a hefty amount of affordable housing for sure. Um, and and uh, so it, it's, I guess, where do you put it all? How do you earmark those spaces? How do you actually get it built in a timely fashion? They're all tough, tough hurdles. Well, that's the interesting part about mm -hmm. what we're working on. It's actually based upon a concept that the previous um, ED of Peterborough Housing came up with. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a significant number of units that were built in the 60s mm -hmm. and 70s. Mm -hmm. And they were... Apartment units you're referring to, Henry? Apartment mm -hmm. units? Uh, or townhouses. Townhouses, yep. Yeah, and we also had a fair number of single family, too, mm -hmm. within Peterborough Housing Corporation. Mm -hmm. They weren't making what we would consider today appropriate use of the land. Mm -hmm. So there are also many of them coming towards the end of their life cycle. Now, they've, we still spend a lot of money, and they're still in good shape. I don't, don't mean that. But they are getting towards the end of their life cycle. So we are looking seriously at taking some of them out, tearing them down, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and rebuilding uh, brand new, modern, more intense. Mm -hmm. um, how intense is something we are definitely discussing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, we then have the ability through what is called a GB or a government business enterprise mm -hmm. to borrow the funds from the, uh, the federal government mm -hmm. without putting them on the city's books. They're not called what you don't have to consolidate the um, the business records of a GBE with the city because hmm. that's a huge issue. If we go out and try to borrow two or three hundred million dollars, which mm -hmm. is what this project would require, mm -hmm. the city would have no debt capacity left to be able to do anything else. Totally, yeah. So you could say, forget about fixing uh, your streets. Forget about putting up the new replacement mm -hmm. for the Memorial Center. Mm -hmm. There just is no money for it. Mm -hmm. But if we do it this way, we can provide, we think, several hundred new units. Um, originally, we thought it was going to be more than that. Mm -hmm. But we have now found that there's things like sewer capacity that says, no, there's land there. But unless you want to put an awful lot of millions of dollars in there, which then takes it as of being economical, then you just can't do that project. So you're talking about, this is an interesting concept, you're talking about taking a loan from the federal government, essentially, to, it's, you know, the municipal government 
taking a mortgage out from the federal government to build some construction, but it's in a separate enterprise that's via the Peterborough, uh, the, the construct or the, the housing, um, uh, forgive me, you have to fill me back in the name, Henry. The the, yeah, the GBE, Government Business Enterprise. Government Business Enterprise. So it's in yeah. a separate thing. It leaves a municipal budget and it stays there. You know, in what type of terms? How, how does that all work in terms yeah. of, and you know. It, it, it's not a municipal budget. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's a standalone um, corporation. Mm-hmm. Affordable housing, by that I mean those that are at roughly 80% of market rent, mm-hmm. actually can carry their own costs. It doesn't require municipal or federal or provincial money to go into it. So that's what we're looking at trying to do, is to increase that supply. That, as you do it right, should create some money to be able to create what's called uh, rent gear de income. Mm-hmm. Now, that's the ones when people really don't have uh, much uh, income coming mm-hmm. in. They may have a disability pension or what have you. Mm-hmm. And that's when you're trying to get their rents down to 30% of their income or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cities can't on their own do that. No city can. Mm-hmm. But the feds and the province, they have much deeper pockets. Mm-hmm. So we could administer it. That's always the best way. Let mm-hmm. the local people administer let the senior government or the other levels, I don't like to call them senior, mm-hmm. um, let them pay for it. Mm-hmm. They provide the funds, we provide the expertise, and we can make a real difference for people. And so Peterborough Housing Corporation is not something I know a lot about. I definitely have to learn more as time goes on. Um, they, You manage these, you build affordable housing units, and Peterborough Housing Corporation actively manages them themselves to to sort of keep the financials afloat and make sure the rents come in and everything gets paid and carries that, on? That's the way it's working now. Mm-hmm. But when we separate it into two sections, the current Peterborough Housing Corporation would look after the rent geared income, which is, are the ones that need all the subsidies from the other mm-hmm. levels of government. Mm-hmm. The government, bene- government business enterprise mm-hmm. would be your affordable housing you're 80 mm-hmm. percent okay so that's where the distinction where the split is there's peterborough housing corporation there's government business enterprise that's yes. more it, it's it's one step closer to market rate housing it's the affordable housing that's people it's still get, below yeah um it's still below now a distinction to be very clear because mm-hmm. it gets people going huh what do you mean a, a market rent i'm not, when i'm talking market rent or 80% of, I'm not talking about what you would go out and try and find to rent an apartment in Peterborough, which right now is good luck. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the official ones that are the rates that are published by the government. They're a lot lower. CMHC? Yeah. 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 They are a lot lower. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I can't find those prices. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that's what we're looking at and Mm -hmm. that's what we can provide. And as you say, they are financially sustainable Mm -hmm. without requiring funds from either the uh, the feds or or the province or from us because we don't have it when you say they're financially sustainable um on what basis in terms of what financing structure like where you know because that's a lot of money to put these buildings up and then you say they're financially sustainable yeah. under what debt uh if we are getting 80 mm-hmm. percent of the current market rent mm-hmm. Not the what's out there, but rather what is uh, established. CMHC's posted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That generates enough income mm-hmm. to pay the mortgage mm-hmm. on the loan, mm-hmm. keep the buildings up, pay for the staff mm-hmm. that uh, administer it and run it. Mm-hmm. And so that initial collateral, if we're thinking about this in terms of typical construction financing, you're going to have a down payment and then a loan. That down payment portion, that por- portion of the actual collateral, where does that come from? Is that federal money? Is that municipal money? Uh, that's a couple of the details. I hate to put it this way, but we're still working on. Right. Because uh, what we were told initially was a certain plan. What we're hearing now is a slightly different plan. Mm-hmm. And it's making it just that little bit more difficult to do. But we're still trying to work through that way. Right. As okay. I say, there, there just isn't huge pockets of money that the city's got that can put into making totally. this live. Yeah, totally. Um I see. I'm. I'm looking at the time. We're we're nearing towards the end. We'll start to wrap on. Uh, a, you know, a couple of things. I. I guess before I come around with any parting thoughts, Henry, 
Is there anything that we didn't get to talk about that you'd like to, to hit on? I have really enjoyed the discussion <laughs> because, first of all, it's been very wide ranging. Mm -hmm. um, I've appreciated your thoughts and, and where you're wanting to look at. And uh, I think we, we've covered an awful lot of, of items. I don't want to try and jam something in. I, mm -hmm. I've just enjoyed the free flow of, well, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Totally. So one thing I think is always fun because, of course, as much as people want to know your plan, uh, they want to know who you are as a person. To I think that's the best way to help understand how does somebody think, you know, what decisions will they make. Uh, there's, you can say what you plan to do, but how does this guy think, I think is more important for most people to understand because they want to know if they'll, if you'll assess situations, anything could change in the future. What you think is priority right now, it could all change tomorrow. We have a couple more storms like we did. Things are very dynamic, right? Don't um, even... Don't even think about <laughs> something like that. Hey, like like you said, the weather's changing. But I guess I like to know stuff. I, I'm always interested in people's personal habits. You, obviously, you like getting stuff done. You've been in the military. That's very action oriented. Um, of course, if you want to help people, you're, you you've got to be pretty motivated to get things done. Uh, how do you conduct yourself in a normal day? What you know? You, could you give us a, a, an idea of a morning routine? Is there a certain structure you like to your days to get get the most out of them? Mm, no, because you know every day is different. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's relatively fluid. I never know when I get up what my wife may want me to do that day, <laughs> or the phone calls as they come in with what the issues are. Mm -hmm. You know, I had people calling today about a recreation problem, people about a tree problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just never know. So it gives you that real variety that just gives you the energy to just keep on going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you a morning guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Up at, up at the, the crack of dawn or? Well, uh, not as crack as I used to be. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a Quaker for a lot of years, I had to be there before 7 in the morning. So you had that. So yeah. I was up. But uh, my wife is a very, a real night hawk. So I've been adjusting somewhat You're to her getting, and getting yeah, her yeah. to adjust a bit more to me. Yeah, yeah. And do you guys, you kids? You have kids? Yeah, we have a son and yeah. uh, a four-year-old granddaughter. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And how old is your son now? 42. So you guys are, yeah, yeah. No, beautiful. Amazing. Um, no, that's very cool. And, uh, any, any hobbies outside of, uh, I'm sure your work, you're probably working. Uh, oh, I love lot, to read. But, I read yeah. every day, e even if it's when I crawl into bed at night. What's we, the typical, what, what's the, what range of topics do you like? I, I read a lot of history, yep. especially military yep. history. I yep. love good fiction. Tom Clancy is, is, uh, a mm -hmm. favorite. Mm -hmm. My wife and I love to travel. Mm -hmm. And we're campers getting out in the uh, the great outdoors. So nice. I love that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I've been reading some of the history. Uh, started to read a little bit of of, of uh, Theodore Roosevelt stuff. There's reams of stuff on him, and that got me interested in a bit of the military history because mm -hmm. his stories. Uh, oh, yeah. he's Sam very Hill involved. And all yeah. that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So no, that's very cool. Um, well, I, that's probably a good place to wrap. I guess, Henry, uh, where does anybody get in touch with you? We'll put all your contact information down below for anybody who wants to reach you. Um, any, anything you want to mention? Where, where's your best place for people to, to get a hold of you if they got questions or where do they support you? The, the, the easiest way to reach me if it's on city business mm -hmm. is either to call my home, mm -hmm. which is 705 749-3149. Mm -hmm. They're welcome to call. Mm -hmm. They can call City Hall. There's a voice answering machine there. Mm -hmm. They can send me an email because the pager, the Blackberry is always with me. Yeah. Yep. Um, for the election, there is a website mm -hmm. and they are welcome to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. And if they want to know something, just pick up the phone and call. Yeah, <laughs> or, or say I'm email. sure you'll get quite busy as things get closer to uh, oh, the yeah. actual election. Hey, I've even learned to text. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's it's a big time saver. Yeah, um, excellent. Okay, well, thank you, Henry, for for being here, and uh, thanks for taking the time to do this. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the conversation. Take care, guys. Yeah.